It's a beautiful Sunday, the 9th of January in the year 2021. Thank you so much for joining us for this amazing edition of the assignment program. I'm your host. My name is Andrew Mwans. And our president, Edgar Lungu, has terminated the appointment of the Mansa Central Lawmaker and has since appointed Bonam Kubo, a member of parliament and Minister of Water Affairs, Honorable Jonas Kamina Chanda as the new Minister of Health, and Rafa Nakachinda has been appointed as new Minister of Water Affairs Development and sanitation. This is contained in a statement issued by State House Press and Public Relations Officer Isaac Chipampe. A financial scandal involving the supply of $17 million worth of medicine was unearthed by the Auditor General's Office. And the Parliamentary Accounts Committee uh, has established that a supplier honeybee supplied leaking condoms, gloves, and fake medicine. On tonight's edition of the assignment, my guest attributes the suffering of the residents of Mwembeshi constituency. As reason he joined politics, I'm joined in by Majila Jamba, Member of Parliament for uh, Mwembeshi constituency. Honorable, good evening, good and evening. Uh, welcome to, to tonight's edition of the assignment. Good evening and good evening, viewers. Let's begin off with the biggest news, uh, you know, just which just floated in a few minutes ago that the President has fired the Minister responsible for health, now ex-Minister, Honorable Chitalo Chilufia. I do know for a fact that different political parties, many political parties, civil society organizations were calling uh, for the firing of Honorable Chitalo Chilufia. Now, finally, the president has acted and has since fired Honorable Chitalo Chilufia. Let's begin off from there. What is your reaction uh, from this particular termination of Dr. Chitalo Chilufia's contract? Uh, this has been overdue. It has been overdue. Yes. He is the one who appoints. Of course, we do not delight in terminations of contracts, but I think the termination of the health minister's um, uh, contract has been overdue. People have been talking about these things, things which are not straight in the ministry, for a long time. And uh, you just want to allow people sometimes the revolt of the people that please. Can you remove this person? That has been overdue. But I want to congratulate Jonas. He's my friend, he's my colleague. We congratulate him for being appointed as the health minister. We hope he's going to bring sanity. Uh, you know, there are sometimes, I was hearing some, like in uh, last year, the health, uh, the Minister of Health, the workers there, they're supposed to have done a seminar on how to handle COVID, you know, that swiping thing. Tell me what, they didn't even have that. But today I can hear some people are given certificates of attendance, a thing which they did not even attend. You see, it has been overdue. Let him remain as a member of parliament for Mansa Central. It's fine. After all, how many days are remaining? Just a few days. May is just now. Parliament is going to be dissolved. Each one for himself. God for us all. Should the president be commended for this particular action that is decided to take? I do know for a fact that you've, many of you members of parliament have been calling the president a coward for not, you know, being magnanimous enough to act when the people of Zambia, you know, want him to act. Don't no. you think you should be commended uh, for, 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 for acting in this particular manner? We commend him for acting in, in such a, a, a manner, but I've said it has been overdue. There are some times when you don't let the water get on your head. You can see the waters. You see, we have remained with very few months, eh? Mm. And you need to know that we have been calling about these things, that things are not straight. There's too much corruption, there's too much things which are not clean. They come through even the parliament committees. We sit and we see that things are not all right. And we have been calling for uh, the, the president to do his actions. The president sometimes is too slow in his actions, too slow, too slow. Yes, we congratulate him for doing what he has done, but he's too slow. You see, my friend, experience is a good teacher, but only fools learn through experience. That's a, an adage which is very serious. Experience is a good teacher. This is fire. You are going to burn. So you want to claim, no, let me touch it so that I have experience. You burn. <laughs> you are foolish. There are things which we think they are not straight, and we tell the, the, the powers that be, these things are not straight. Shall we do action? And the president sometimes, he takes his time. He takes his time. The story of Kabanshi. You remember Kabanshi? 
People brought stories about Kaban Shino, you know, the, 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 what you call that fund. Just in a few, uh, a few days, a few hours, she was fired, relinquished of her duties. But can you compare Kabanshi's uh, issues with the, these people, some of the people who are still holding office? One of uh, the person who was working seriously in the Ministry of Education, of course he did some scandal, just within 24 hours or whatever, he was fired. But people who are risking other people's lives, they are scot free to be going for months and months. Now we are going to the end of the term. It's serious business, my brother. Serious. But probably, don't you think we should give him a benefit of a doubt? Because like, like they say, you know, the slow movement of a tiger is not a mistake, but the calculation of accuracy. Uh, probably this matter is a bit sensitive that the president needed a bit of uh, due diligence in terms of investigations to be done for him to, to make an informed uh, decision, as opposed to be acting on impulse. When people say, do this, you do that. Uh, don't you think uh, the president has been magnanimous enough? For example, I'll give you also a very practical example. When the COVID-19 came, you know, um, when COVID-19 came in Zambia, you know, the global, you know, uh, you know the, the, the global push was locked down. But the president was very careful you know, in how we made the decision. Those calls from civil society organizations and, and the main political party, that is the, the, the largest opposition political party, the UPN, they had called for a total lockdown. But the president was, was a bit slow in acting because he wanted to calculate what would work for Zambia and what would not work for Zambia. And, you know, from the decision he made, it seemed he made the right decision not to completely lock down the country. Don't you think the president should be commended, you know, for, for acting in an informed position? allowing investigations to be done first so that as he acts he knows that what I'm acting on is something that is right. You see my friend, the, 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 the presidency is a big institution. The president knows a lot of things better than we know. He has got everything on his fingertips. Even he wanted me to know who Jamba is. By tomorrow morning he will know who I am. Does it mean you need to be so calculative so that you know that this young man, he came into power in 2011. He had a trouser which was ironed here, shiny. His trouser was a finished trouser. He gets very low money at parliament. But today he's driving big cars. He's building a lot of, a lot of lodges everywhere. Go in some of, some of these people's car parks, you find he has got a Jaguar here, he has got a, a, a Range Rover here, he has got a whatever. How much money do you get from Parliament for you to make that money? At least I'm old enough to tell you that the ministers who are serving in Kaunda era for 27 years, they never amassed wealthy as people who have been serving only for a short period of time, less than 10 years, my friend. You are like a billionaire. In Zambia where there is poverty, and you want to say, no, you are calculating, calculating. Calculating what in poverty? Calculating what? There are a lot of Zambians who can serve in those positions. They say, we commend him, I've told you. I commend him for removing him. But there are a lot of Zambians who are genuine, who can serve this country. Of course, you see, you are going to tell me, no, do you have evidence, whatever. Wukawala and wukawala here. You see, when you have, you see, let me tell you something. You, you work here. We know you, you work here. All of a sudden, you become a millionaire. Where did you get the money? You are becoming richer than the proprietor of this, 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 this TV station. Then you think that you have worked hard. How can you work hard more than the owner of this, this TV station? We are the owners of Zambia. How do you want to become richer than us? Are there people who are richer than us, really? Yes, they are. Which, one, which ones are those? Men? <laughs> My or friend, uh, that's why I'm telling you that uh, such things, we, the president knows a lot of things. If we in, in Tonga we say, in Euros they say, those are obvious questions which should not be even asked. You can see how people are flourishing when others are in poverty. Do you know that there are people who cannot even eat three meals, not even one meal in a day? Go down there. Someone has got a five kwacha so he goes to Soweto in the evening. In the evening, they buy a kapamela. 
In fact, these days the problem also because the kwacha has lost value because an egg is two kwacha. There are people who go and buy one egg for two kwacha. They buy 150 for kapamela. No cooking oil, they go and make food and the children eat. Meanwhile, some other people can tell us that no, two million, two million is shopping money. Haven't you heard such things? How much do I get as a member of parliament for me to have two million as shopping money? Then I must be a big thief. Probably ministers get more. Where? You can tell us. You're, you're, you're no, like... there's no difference between all of us are members of parliament. The difference is if there's any difference. There's no difference. We know what everyone gets. So there's nothing like all of us are members of parliament. All of us are members of parliament, except someone is privileged. That for you now, you are going to be in the executive during this period of time. But you have seen how they become rich. How would you describe how President Lungu has transacted leadership uh, from the time that he was, you know, maybe just, let's just recap 2020, you know, get into, now we are, we are nine days into 2021. How would you describe uh, the state of governance, you know, from period of 2020 till to date? You see, sometimes you wonder, uh, he's a good man, I've met him, but I think he's too slow in his actions. He's too slow in his actions. He lets people do things which are not supposed to be done. It has actually collapsed our economy. Too much laser fee. Too much laser fee. There are people when the president speaks, they don't do what the president has spoken. There are people like that. Me, I can, I can give you an example because in Mwembeshi, he gave instruction, go and do the road in Nampundu. That road is that road. Go and do that Nampundu road. He was telling them, go and do it. Who went there? No one. They are just looking at him. Why should a parent, when his parent speaks, people cannot move? He has made it like that because he doesn't fire people. Let me tell you something. During the time, okay, people will say Kaunda was a dictator or whatever. When Kaunda goes to Mfue, stones, heads would roll. Frags were removed on the road. Someone is on the road. Kaunda has announced a reshuffle in his cabinet. How many reshuffles have we seen in this cabinet? How many? But sometimes he lets people continue doing things which are wrong. And he looks at them. Why? So sometimes we have justify, questions. Could it justify that, well, we, well, we, we have the weak president in state house, like many have said. I don't want to go that way. I've just told you. For me, he's too lenient on his executive. That is his executive which builds his image. There are people who come in parliament there, they stand and pronounce things, and then they do nothing, and then he lets them be like that. You can't allow such a thing. You can't. You can't. Let's, let's go to another critical issue, really, before we can get to the nitty-gritties, you know, of the state of governance. Now, another critical issue is, um, I do know for a fact that 2021 is already in 2021, and on the 12th of uh, August, the people of Zambia will be voting again uh, for the president, for the mayors, for the members of parliament, and for the councillors. You being an, an, an independent member of parliament, obviously, it hasn't been, you know, as easy, uh, you know, as many people would, would, would make it, you know, would make it sound. Mm -hmm. Let's get to how uh, you would assess your performance in terms of delivering uh, the, the campaign promises to the people of Mwembeshi. How would you, you know, uh, assess yourself in terms of uh, service delivery to the people of Mwembeshi? Uh, first and foremost, I want to educate the masses. This is where we get it wrong. That question which you are asking me, how have I performed in terms of delivery? If you asked me a question, how has the executive delivered? Mm. That's the correct way. Because it's not for me as a member of parliament. Me, I'm a legislator who sits in parliament to make laws and also inform the people, inform the executive of what is needed in my constituents. Now, for your own information, I stand, I would go to parliament and tell them the problems which we are facing in Mwembeshi. Like, let me tell you an example. We, have, we, we don't have a road. There's no road there in Mwembeshi. In Mwembeshi. There's no road. There is no hospital. There is no secondary school. That is a rural area. There is no boarding school. Now, 
Some people will tell you, no, the MP has not delivered it. He didn't bring a road. Is there anywhere where the road is manufactured, where the MP is going to grab from parliament and start laying it down? No. The issue is this executive. That's why our governance system depends on the executive. If the executive is not doing their job, you start condemning MPs, that is, they have not done anything. We go there and tell the executive, there is no Lord in Mwembesh. How many times have I come on the media? How many times have I stood in Parliament to tell them that there is no Lord in, in Mwembesh? Honorable uh, Chitotela, when he was the Minister of um, Infrastructure and uh, Development, whatever, we were called with him in the presence of the, the, the president. And the president told him, can you go to Nampundwe and do the road? What else would I have done? My duty is to go and inform the executive. I inform the highest executive officer. You know that when they say that, uh, what do you call that thing which they sit? Cabinet is sitting. The president can sit a cabinet of one, him and another person. It's called the cabinet. I asked my question like that, Honorable, because I remember when you've been interviewed, and this is what you said. I want to transform the general outlook of the constituency to improve the livelihoods of the people. I, w I will work on improving the road, health, and school, and school infrastructure. I will improve the status of Dampundwe Road so that I can take economic activities to the constituency. You said also that the road has a lot of economic benefits to Zambia as it connects Nampundwe mine, which produces pirate as raw materials used in copper production on the copper belt. The road also connects to Kafiwa sugar plantation, universal mining, and also the Blue Lagoon National Park. I asked like this because this is what you said. Yes. Uh, and, 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 and my question was, how would you assess uh, your performance in terms of the things that you promised the people of uh, Mwembeshi? That, that is very true. Question. The question here is, this executive has failed me. We had agreed on terms and conditions. They said they are going to do Napunda Road, and they gave me even the budget, 253 billion, which was allocated to that road. And they said they are going to start. Every week I would go, I became like an employee of RDA. Every week I would be going there twice to go and check on the road. No, we are coming, honorable. No, we are coming, you know, me. My idea was that we have worked with this government for your own information. When I went into uh, parliament in 2016, these uh, PF people are saying, no, just work with us as people say, no, work with the government, they are going to deliver. I was working with them. Go and check the hazard. I was working with them. They failed me because they could not do the road. Even as early as last month in December, they were promising that they are going to come there and put a tarmac. Up to now, they have failed to do that. Do you regret voting with them? You know, regrets, you know when you fall, a man is seen, how many times you are going to rise? We talk about these things. If people, you work with your, your, your friends, let's do this thing, you agree. It's a government in power. They're the ones who have got the money. Even if sometimes I don't agree with what they, I don't agree with what they, they were doing. I told them, let's do the road. I'll talk to them. Do you them. regret voting with them? That's a question, Honorable. No, 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 no. Uh, it's, it's not that I regret. I've told you, me, I do my honest part. If I agree with you that I'm going to do such a thing, I will do my honest part. If you don't do your honest part, that is your own endeavor. Them, they do not do their honest part. If you were going to give me a, a chance here just to play one voice here so that people can hear, I can play it to you. When I was par in Parliament, I asked you, Honorable Chirufa Chitaru that we needed a, a hospital in in, 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 in Mwembesh. Do you know what he, he told me? Honorable Jamba, we are giving you two mini hospitals in Mwembesh and we are building them by November 2019. Those are government, that's what you call government assurances on parliament, on the floor of the house. When a minister stands and says those words, those are government assurances, which are supposed to be taken seriously. They did not do anything. And you really think that me, I'm, um, uh, I, I'm going to praise them. No, the PF has worked in Mwembesh. They've done literally nothing. I can't praise them. And I have to tell the people the truth. What is the truth? The truth is we agreed we are going to do the road. You know, for any information, let me give you history. There in Mwembesh, immediately I won the membership of member of parliament. All the councillors were UPND. One councillor in Inampundwe ward resigned from, 
from, from being a counselor. Then they told us, this PF said, they told us, no, you people in Nampundwe, ka vote de kano, sumu vote abu ino. Muka vote achabe wa PF, muka wa vote ala pamuza wana development. We told the people, these people, hear what they are saying. Can you give them a counselor in Nampundwe under PF? We gave them a counselor. There's a counselor under PF there in Nampundwe. The vice president herself went to Nampundwe, flew there with a chopper. Not stories. She flew there and told them that this immediately you do, you give us a counselor. We are going to do this road. Where is the road now? Is there any higher office than the president and the, the vice president? Is there any, uh, any higher office? There's no any higher office here in this, land, in this land. The higher office is the vice president's office and the, 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 the president's office. When the vice president has said something, we are going to do this road. I can... well, well, what would you say are some of the challenges you've experienced as a member of parliament? Uh, you know, you've been an independent member of parliament. I, I do know for a fact that the, the, the president has been heard on a number of platforms stating that uh, once you vote for this, you know, uh, MP, mm. uh, development will come to this constituency. And, and, and as you answer that question, maybe, maybe many people want to understand also what the role of a member of parliament is. You've been a member of parliament with experience. You can tell us what the roles of a member of parliament, you know, are. We've also heard, uh, Honorable, many of, you, of your colleagues, the, the members of parliament, promise many, many, many of these things that you're, you're talking about, to build roads, to do this and that, and, and, and people hold them to account, you know, for, for the promises that they've, they've been promising the people. Maybe you can help us understand what are the roles of a member of parliament and how challenging has it been for you as an independent member of parliament? It's a big challenge. You know, in, in, in an economy where the economy is thriving, and you have got an executive which does not look into your eyes where you come from, which constituency have, where you voted in, who voted for you. When you have got an executive like that, which can take development to all parts of the country, I think the job of an MP can be easier. The job of an MP is to lobby, is to tell government to bring the problems. You are between the people and the executive. You tell the executive. My, my executive, this is what we are facing. We have got a challenge. Let's say in Mwembeshi, we have got a challenge. What challenge do you have? I told the minister then, Chirufia Chitaru, we don't have a hospital. All referrals which are coming from um, the whole constituents, we refer them to Lev Manawasa or the, um, the UTH. That's where we do the reference. So I told them we needed a hospital in that constituency. That was my duty, is to tell them, them it is their duty now to deliver that hospital, which they had actually promised. I can play you the, the clay. We are going to do two mini hospitals. Would have reduced the exportation of people from Nampundwe into Lusaka here. But then they couldn't do that. The job of the NP is to lobby the government. It is to registrate. You heard about Buten? that famous one which collapsed like Babylon, it was our duty as members of parliament to make sure that that law, if it meant to pass, it should pass. It meant, if it means to fail, it has to fail because that is our duty to legislate. And you voted for the, for the bill. How can I vote for something which is not worth it to vote? Do you think there was anything to vote for here? There was no point of voting. That thing you, collapsed. You, 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 you just said you, you've been voting with the PF because of the promises that have been... That was a dead living. issue, my friend. I told you. That, it's a dead issue. That one, let's even bury it. You see, we, we are going to waste a lot of big time here talking about development or talking about Britain, which was wrong. Mm. That thing was a dead... Uh, brought in dead and went out dead. So let's talk uh, about but, issues. I, I, I ask questions like this for, for many reasons. Uh, Honorable, when you bring out an issue, I, I would ask a follow-up question. Yes, just yes, you to do. Just understand and, 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 and make sure that people get the sense of, you know, of, of, of what you're saying. Because uh, let me give you an example. Let me bring you back to, you know, the time we had Bill 10. Mm -hmm. You know, we did hear many stories uh, from members of parliament that look like giving money, you know, to members of parliament to vote, uh, you know, for the bill. You've just mentioned that you, you've been, you know, you, you, you had at some point voted with the PF, uh, you know, in transactional terms because they promised that they would do this for you in terms of bringing development to the people of Mwembeshi. That's the reason why I asked that question. Mm. My next question to you, Honorable, is um, are, are you done answering the, the, the question that I asked you? No, I'm not yet done. Maybe you can, you, you, you can proceed with the question. Listen. With, with the answer. I attended the NDF. Me, I attended the NDF. 
I understood what was in Butane, not these people who are talking from nowhere. Me, I understood Butane. Within the NDF premises there, a few media people were there. It was me and Chabi for Ch um, Chipidi, who were controversial, that we had been controversial. We said this thing is a non-starter. When it went into this infamous Nakachinda, the one who, who dances for whatever, this Nakachinda man, when... <laughs> he's not Minister Honorable. <laughs> but, but anyways, yeah, yeah, he's Minister. I don't, I don't, he's, a, he's a member of Parliament. For me, he's a member of Parliament. Yeah, whatever but he's not been appointed yes, as Minister. Yes, that, that very Nakachinda, when it went into, in, on the floor, when Nakachinda was chairing mm. that meeting, I personally went to that committee and I told them that the people of Mwembesha have said no to this and I'm not going to vote for it. I wasn't coerced by anybody, but the people of Mwembe said no to that. Mm. That's why I but told no, you no, it was but, bad. Yeah, I think before we can, you know, divert a little bit, let's get back to what we're talking about. Um, do you think, to a larger extent, uh, belonging to a part in government um, helps bring development to, to a constituency when you're a member of parliament? No. You, I've told you, if you have an executive which is very serious, has got the money and is able to share properly, then you are going to develop your constituents. I want to tell you, it's not only the, the, the people who are in opposition like the UPND or the, where they're perceived the UPND. It's not only those ones. I can tell you that some MPs where they are coming from, they are suffering, they are crying. I have got a friend in Mangango. You know that Mangango MP? Mm. <laughs> no vote for Mangango PF vote. He was voted in. They are still crying for that road, the Rukuru road. Nothing is happening. I've got a lot of friends who are PF. We are members of parliament. We discuss. We are also human beings, my friend. We discuss within ourselves. But PF wasn't I voting with them? So that idea of saying voting for, it is the seriousness of the executive. How do they apportion money? How do they bring, how does their policies make money to be, there will be a lot of money into, into the banks? That's when you think, you see, this thing has got a lot of issues. Sometimes when the economy is mismanaged, they don't even have the money now to do what, to do the roads. They don't have the money. So it doesn't matter whether you are in PF mm. or whatever. The issue which matters is, is the government at that state of the, at that time, is it able to do what it's supposed to do to all the constituencies? When the second wave of honorable uh, of fighting the COVID-19, already we did see uh, the honorable minister responsible for Lusaka moving around, uh, whipping people that are not uh, adhering to COVID-19 protocols. What would you make of uh, the move by the minister responsible for Lusaka? <laughs> you know, my friend, you know when you have got a rich dad, eh? Have you seen those boys who have got rich, pa rich, rich parents? Eh? They want to do everything. They think that they know everything. It's not for you to be the adjudicator and the jury at the same time, everything. You can't do that. We can encourage the way I'm seated here. I want to encourage the people. This COVID is a serious business. Let us adhere to what we are supposed to do. And then if there are essays which are being signed by the government, they are actually um, people who have been assigned to execute that, the laws. If, say, you go in a bar, you find people are drinking, whose duty is it? It is the council. It is the council, the city council, Osaka city council, to see that people are not crowding in those bars. They are not supposed to be there. And if we, the city council is overwhelmed, they will ask the Zambia police to join them. That can we please help us? If the Zambia police are overwhelmed, they can ask any other law enforcement, those who know what's supposed to do. It's not for a minister himself from all out. You start walking around and chasing people. Which, which law are you using? You are a policymaker are supposed to be seated with the president there in the cabinet and trying to align the, the economy. You want to be going around chasing people at no Eku Bomba. Don't even ask me about that small boy, Bowman, whatever you call him. He doesn't know what he's doing. He doesn't know. 
are we, are we on the right path as a country in terms of how we are you know uh, battling with this with, with this pandemic um yes we are people are adhering people are listening but some there are some people who are skeptical also who still you know takwa covid is not there it's there but all we need is to put our effort together fight this covid let's fight this covid if it means ourselves who we have a blanket for steaming or whatever let us do it whatever thing which can work just to make sure that this covid is eradicated let's do it if it means uh, you know these social gatherings like funerals where people would go in masses and in buses carrying one another, those things must be stopped. At least we, if we can, okay, let's go and bury, within one hour we bury, we do social distancing, then we are on the right track. Let us make sure that, I don't want to have people who are going to vote for me, okay, in, 20, in, in August, if all people are going to die. Who are going to vote for me? I want people to be alive up to 20, uh, in, in 2021, uh, August 12th, so that people are able to vote for me, because I want people who are alive. No matter how many coffins mm -hmm. I'm going to buy, yeah. it won't suffice. Well, to, to what extent is COVID-19 affecting the state of, state of our democracy, uh, according to your own assessment? You see, uh, of course, there are people who act with impunity. They want to come wherever this president is, is like the president is going to the copper belt that they are coming on trying to see what are they trying to see what are they trying to see i ask like that because i think we've been told by many political parties that look for some of us we're not allowed to mobilize uh, because we're told that there's COVID. yet the ruling party you know is doing whatever they, they're doing and uh, this is uh, negatively affecting our mobilization that's the reason why i asked that you know okay honorable. yeah i want to think that you see some of these things eh you know, the um, nature has got a way of balancing. Eh? Nature has got a way of balancing. You will stop people from gathering when you are also gathering somewhere. They will find a way of how to go out about and gather themselves. They have already found the formulas of gathering. They are gathering. You, you cannot even you know. You think they are looking for permits. They are gathering on WhatsApp. They are gathering on whatever. They are gathering. Nature has got a way of balancing. And let me tell you one thing. There is only one thing which is permanent. It's change. You can't think that you are going to be in government always and try to advantage yourself. Even when you do advantage yourself so much that you can, you can be making mararis every day, when people have refused and have changed their course, you will just end up be surprised on that day. Like some cried. You start crying. Twenty twenty one is around the corner. The twelfth of uh, August is around the corner. Honourable uh, member of Parliament for Mwembeshi. we do know for a fact that in twenty sixteen, initially you were supposed to contest on the UPND ticket, but two days you know before the nomination, the certificate for nomination was not given to you. You went in as independent. Fortunate enough, you did win that particular seat in Mwembeshi. Mm. Twenty twenty one, are we looking at you going on 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 any political party ticket? Yes, I'm going on one of the political party, but first of all, I have to make my name as a brand mark. Jamba is a brand mark in Mwembeshi, my friend. It's a brand mark. Any party which wants to win in Mwembeshi, members of parliament, it's a brand mark, Jamba. Mm. Yes. Obviously, your preferral was, uh, you know, was the UPND then. You were supposed to, 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 to contest on the UPND ticket. Are we seeing uh, history repeating itself? Let me tell you something. Um, I have not joined the UPND, mm. just like I did not join PF when I was working with them. Of course I work with the UPND, but I haven't joined the UPND. I will decide then if I want to stand with them on their ticket during that time. I will then also decide if I want to stand on PF because I worked with them. Do I become now a demon to them because I don't work with them? When I was working with them, I'm, I'm an angel. No. But obviously the people would want you to stand on the UPND ticket, isn't it? Um, well, in 2016, you did tell us, Honorable, that the people of Mwembeshi asked you to stand on the UPND ticket. And, mm -hmm. and from history, from 1991, we've not had a member of parliament uh, coming from the, from, from the PF. In 1991, we, did, we had MMD. In 96, we had MMD. In 2001, we had UPND. And uh, in 2006, we had Edward Kasoko of uh, the United Democratic Alliance. Uh, in 2011, we had uh, UPND. 
and now 2016 we are due. Obviously, there's no track history or track record for a member of parliament belonging to the PF. Obviously, it's UP and the Honorable. That's I have told you. You see, I, I, I have got a way of I, uh, the way I do things. Eh? I make alliances with, uh, with friends or they make alliances with me. I told you when we were voting for Buten, the UPND made an alliance with me so that I could win the battle of Buten. So they joined me and we won. So I worked with them or they worked with me, whichever way we want to, want to put it, they worked with me. I'm working with them, but I haven't joined them. I'm not, a, I'm not a member of the UPND, but I'm working with them just the way I was working with the PF when I wasn't a member. So, so would, you, would you confidently say that one of the reasons why you voted against Bill 10 or didn't attend, you know, uh, the seminar in Parliament when Bill 10 was being voted for was because you were promised, uh, you know, uh, to be to be to, to you know to, to be to be to, to be dominated as as, as a, to be you know to be to, to be uh, given the seat on, on, on the UPND ticket. Would you would you agree? Let me tell you that? something. We are 17 million people in Zambia. What have I got to prove so that people can give me adoption? How many of us are members of parliament? I'm already a member of parliament. There's nothing to prove. I beat PF in, in Mwembesh. I beat UPND there. I beat which other, those small parties. I beat them there in Mwembesh. What have I got to prove? That no, you are going to give me an adoption certificate. Don't, am I so dull that I cannot think on my own that this thing is, is dead? I told them, you, do you want, you, are you a Christian? Look at me. I can stand on an anti you tell people, me, I'm a Christian, me, I'm a Christian. It's the people who are going to say, Jamba is a Christian. Don't stand on an anti you to say, Zambia is a Christian nation, is a Christian, is a Christian. Which Christians people are thieving like this, stealing? Which Christians? You think me, I would go for such things? You are there stealing money. As an executive, we give you a mandate. Can you do things properly? You are failing to do those things. Now you want power so that you get powers from parliament. You start congolating money, getting credits from other countries without consulting parliament. And the people of Mumbai said no to that, isn't they it? They said no to that. And obviously they wouldn't want you to contest on a, on a party ticket that wants to rip off their constitution. Now sometimes, you know, people are very, uh, people are very tricky. Let me tell you something. Me, I grew up at least in, I'm not going into 50 years. Eh? If you, you look at me as young, but I'm going almost 50 years now. 50 years, I can round off my numbers. I'm 50. But let me tell you something. During the time when our late president, Michael Sata, was governor for Rusaka, no one would ever think Sata is going to be president at that time. But this generation, they celebrated Sata and he became president. So you cannot rule out anything in life. Even the PF, you can't rule You them. can't rule them out. You can't rule them out. That's why people have to work hard. If they want to remove the PF, people have to work hard and present the manifestos proper to the people. Look, this PF has done this. He has done, done this. But I can tell you in my constituents, I'm not going to tell you things which are to, to sugarcoat here things. I'm not going to tell you. I'm telling you PF have failed in Mwembeshi. In other constituencies, maybe they have done anything and, and, in Mwembeshi. And, and, and when you say PF have failed in Mwembeshi, you're representing the voice of yes. Mwembeshi. Yes. They have failed in Mwembeshi. There is no road in Mwembeshi. It's PF. We cannot talk about an MP or whoever. It is the PF government which have failed in Mwembeshi. They have failed us. There's no road. They have failed us. There's no hospital. They have failed us. There's no secondary school. That is a rural constituency. We needed a boarding school. They have failed us. So for me to go and start singing PF, all right, those that are joining the conversation on the Movie TV Plus, Bukia Channel 1, the top side decoder, Channel 104, you'll be able to come through and give us your contributions via the number that is scrolling down your TV screen. Those that are joining the conversation from across the continent of Africa, yours, our social media platforms, our hand on Facebook is Ask Movie TV, on YouTube is Ask Movie TV. We're discussing the state of governance, my guest this evening is independent Mwembeshi member of parliament, Honorable uh, Jamba. Honorable, uh, another critical issue that, uh, you know, uh, we are facing as a country, it was trending, you know, uh, some time back, uh, two months ago, it is, is an issue of debt. Uh, we are now as a country walloping in debt of, uh, of, 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 of about 18.5 billion, that is both external and, uh, you know, uh, domestic debt. Do you think 
the current administration is competent enough to restructure this debt you know as 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 we had to you know to 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 to, to. in fact uh, zambia became the first country to default on paying its interest uh, coupon uh, to our lenders we said uh, that this is strategy according to the minister responsible for finance they call it strategy from you and the people of Mwembeshi, what would you make of the state of the economy in terms of Zambia's debt? You know, first and foremost, that debt which they got, where did it go? Infrastructure, hundred. Which infrastructure? Which in infrastructure? <laughs> People must be very serious. You know, when you go and get a debt, this thing, let us zero it in our own homes, in my own home. Let's zero it in my own home. Because when you're talking about debt outside, the people are looking at it as a big thing, whatever thing. Eh? Let us zero it in our own home. You know the income which you get in your own home. You know what? I get 5,000 kwacha. That's the money which I get. You know that is 5,000 kwacha. You tell yourself, no, what I'm going to do now, because uh, I don't have a perikadin shoe, I'm going to buy a, a perikadin from Italy, a shoe. You buy one from Italy. Then you buy your wife very expensive dresses and handbags. Pangongole. Then you tell your children, no, my children, now we want to start extending our house so that we build a two-story building. You start putting a foundation which you are not even finishing. Did you see this road from, from Lusaka to the Copper Belt? It is just there, Pakabangu. It hasn't gone anywhere, but that's a loan. No, you start building. When you start building, then you start pointing. When now children have got no food in the house, then you say, no, uh, tamamu ena alishitire nsapatu. Tamamu ena alishitire mataa ya motoka. Is that the way you are going to behave? The government itself must be very responsible in getting debt. When I get debt, a person like me, if I was going to get debt, maybe I would look for land in Mwembeshi and go plant cotton or maize, which is going to bring back that money so that I can pay back the what? The loan. You cannot go and get a loan. No, what I'm going to do now is to start building a house. You get a loan from Barclays Bank to build a house which is going to go at roof level. Meanwhile, staying in a, in a rented house. Where are you going to find the money to be? When they start, the bank starts cutting the money, where are you going to find the money to go and rent, to, to go and rent the house where you, where you are renting? That is what the government has done. And then you wake up and now, how are we going to restructure it? When we know Asendere and Congolese, can you restructure it? Don't make us go into the mud because of what you have done. What infrastructure are we talking about? We talked in the, that parliament, we told them, don't build that airport in Indola. Do we need an airport in Indola? A multi-million one in Indola? Do we need it? How many planes are now landing here at this airport? How many planes are landing? Can you tell me how many planes are landing here? How many planes are landing? You go and build a multi-million thing which cannot produce any way. You leave cafe nitrogen chemicals. Where you are supposed to get, if you are going to put even 17 million in that cafe chemicals to revamp it, you go to the textiles in, 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 in Kawe, revamp the, the textile. Why can't you put that money into such things? You want to go and build tomorrow where you think you're going to be getting 20% and funding yourselves. At local contract, local contract, just because you are giving your own sake. What we are saying here is that the money was, where is the money? If the money was invested, let the money pay back the loans. So it just shows that the money wasn't invested in a proper manner. There was no investment. The justification, Honorable, is that, look, the fundamentals have been done. Uh, one of the issues that investors look you know, to, forward to when investing in a country's infrastructure. The PF boss said, look, we've got a very good road network infrastructure. You know, we've got buildings. For, for us, you know, the local people have got the healthy systems. They've built schools in terms of universities and all that. Don't you think these are very... Uh, you know, uh, pivotal fundamentals for even any other government that comes, you know, in place in 2021, it will be, it will be easier for them to, uh, to shoot the economy because fundamentals have been done. You see, don't plan based on somebody's 
else you are anticipating to come. You are already talking about foreign investment, foreign investment, foreign investment from where? Now there is COVID. Who is coming? Because you planned on foreign, foreigners to come here. Why? Why don't you plan on your own? Look here, my friend. Me, I'm a politician. I'm buying Vitenge now for my campaigns. Eh? Not Terela. Even Terela. That Terela you see, Terela for Vitenge. It is not manufactured here in Zambia. Can you, I can tell you, in Malawi now, the Chitengas which we want to give to our, 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 our cadres, they are coming, we can only buy from Malawi. They have got textile in Blantyre, a textile in Blantyre, which manufactures Vitenge from cotton. What is it which they have got in Malawi which we don't have here? Don't we grow cotton? Is our land must not bigger than Malawi? Don't we grow cotton? Why can't we enhance the, the, the manufacturing industry? You see, even those Vitenges for PF, they are ordering them from China. That money which they are doing, ordering Vitenge, why can't they put into a textile? So that that textile is producing Vitenges here in Zambia for UPND. Do you know how much each Tenga is costing? My friend, $20,000 for 10 meters. $20,000 for 10,000 10, meters, which is 200,000. How many MPs are going to buy those Vitenges? How many political parties are going to buy if that money was going to be put in this country? Which foreign investments? Why can't we look within ourselves before we talk about foreign investments? You are saying we are building an airport there so that a plane can land from which country? You don't even have an airplane. You want the jet for the president to be landing in Indola? Landing in Lusaka, landing. That's the, one we have, that's the only thing you have got. Tell me which one are the ZAF ones. ZAF have got their own bases. So what we are saying is you are putting money in wrong, wrong, wrong priorities. You don't know what is a priority. You are putting money in the wrong priorities. And then you wake up in the but morning but and you don't have money. Honorable, <laughs> the education system is not the wrong priority. We've seen, you know, them building, you know, universities. I don't think the health care system is the wrong priority, Honorable. We've seen them build, uh, you know, hospitals. Of, of, of Which university are you talking about? Robert Makasa University. There was, we didn't have Robert Makasa University, but Robert Makasa University, Honorable. My friend. Me, I'm from Mwembeshi. I've told you in Mwembeshi. There is no boarding school. There is nothing there. So which, which schools are you talking about? Can I share in the date which I don't know? Yes, you want to talk about Robert Makasa, which President Sata started. It is now stored. It's not even been built. Let's talk about Lewanika in Mongo. Have you, has, is it finished? Is it finished? So what are we talking about? Go to Paravana here. Go and see what is there. Is it finished? Yes. Some infrastructure has been built where people were able to steal money. You do a contract quickly, quickly, so as you want to benefit from that. Yes, you can tell me that. But genuine, genuine, straightforward things, where are they? Go to Livingstone. Go to Livingstone. There is a one, the bus stop which was supposed to be you know when we were doing that Ikasa thing in, what, in Livingstone, that trade thing, mm. when Sylvia Maso was the, was the Minister of Tourism? Go and check. That thing is now a white elephant. They could not finish it. In Mwembeshi, the council houses, the district council itself which was started, nothing. So which infrastructure are we talking about? This is to my bridges, this is to my flyover bridges you are seeing here in Lusaka. Would you point at any positive that the PF administration has been able to, to do from the time that they got into office? I think when we start pointing at uh, positives in other areas, they, maybe those can point. Let me not... From, 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 from just generally speaking... You see, my friend... Just generally speaking, only, but would you say maybe they are they've scored? Because according to how you're, you're speaking... They have like, managed, it's like, they have managed it's to drop the kwacha from six kwacha to 20 kwacha. They have managed to do that. Ask me another thing. They have managed to do that. They have managed to distribute condoms which are defective. They have managed to distribute groves which are defective. They have managed to distribute medicines which are defective. That's why he has been fired. You want me to tell you what they have managed? Are you sure you want me to tell you what has, they have managed? They have managed to increase the poverty levels in this country. They have managed. They've managed to give us democracy. That's the that's reason you're which like this. Which, which that's democracy? That's reason you're which like democracy? This. Let me tell you, me, I'm a human being. I've got the freedom to speak the way things I see them. To live 
is Christ. To die is gain. So we don't fear. There are people who are cowards, people who are learned like you. You are cowards, you cannot tell things. You want to start praising people at what have they done. You, I'm telling you, they have managed to increase poverty levels in this country. Yes, they have managed. Ask me another thing. How many people have died out of the brutality, out of the shootings? You remember that, that boy who died in Chazanga? Mugala? Do you remember? They managed. And precisely that, 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 that is where I was going to, Honorable. Um, well, the protector of life, the police, seem now to be the enemy of the people. Now the people no longer feel protected because of how, you know, uh, the police have behaved in the recent past. Just a few weeks ago we did, you know, see the, the shooting of two people, though investigations are not yet done. But news that is, is, is being heard is that it's, it's a responsibility of the police. The police were the ones who were responsible for this, though we've not been given proper investigations. Those are just allegations that, you know, people are throwing around. How would you rate the professionalism of the police, especially now as we get to, to the elections? Let me tell you something. Police people are trained, highly trained. The police are highly trained. Do you know who confuses the police? You tell me. It's us, the politicians. It's us, the politicians. We confuse those people. It takes people, those who are in executive, to respect the institutions of governance, respect the police, let them do their job professionally, professionally. Let them do the job professionally, and you see that they can do it. It's the same police, I can tell you, who were there in the time of Kaunda. It's the same police who were there in terms of Manawasa. It's the same police who were there in terms of, of Michael Sata. You remember Michael Sata when he was being called at Central Police? They went to, the, to his home. Guy Scott was there. You remember? They went there. Sata was saying, oh, twala mi konka, twala isaku police. And they went there. They did a professional job. Who died? Don't blame these police people. We shall need them. Let us give them the freedom to do their job. Are you satisfied with the action that the president took to fire the DIGs? I'm not privy to whatever was there, but I want to tell you that... Um, Obviously, people have been calling for justice for Nsama Nsama and uh, uh, Joseph Kaunda. It is a sad story. Nsama Nsama is a sad story and Joseph Kaunda is a sad story. It's a sad story to say we cannot allow such things you can talk about Vespas. Huh? Talk about that gentleman who died in Kaoma. You remember that guy who died in Kaoma? Mm. You see, PF are our friends. Let's talk things. They are friends. Let's be genuine. Let's talk about real things. We stay with PF in our homes. We are same brothers and sisters, except some are on the left and some on the right. I don't agree. I don't agree with the interference of the police, where you allow even Kadarism to be more than the police. That's why you have seen now that the police are being pursued. Kadarism has deteriorated that police have got no, no muscle, and people are dying. I want to tell you that this Kadarism has actually escalated during this period. How many people? You are a journalist. How many people died of gun shooting during the time of, 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 of Manawasa? How many died of gun shooting during the time of Rupia? How many died during the time when we, Michael Sata was here? Tell me how many. Speaking about the same instance, Honorable, um, the issue there was that, you know, the leader of the opposition was invited by the police to, for, for questioning mm. over you know, a farm in, in Kalomo. Mm. I think uh, days before, the minister responsible for, for Home Affairs, Honorable uh, Kampiongo, as well as uh, the, IG, the IG, Honorable Kanganja, did, did issue a statement that we are not going to tolerate unruly behavior and we do not want to see cutters, you know, flock uh, the police headquarters. But we, see, we did see the opposite happen uh, when uh, you know, President of UPND went for questioning. Another school of thought there is that Aga Inde should be blamed for not controlling 
the behavior of his cadres. He was told clearly that don't come with cadres yet, he went with cadres. In the report that the president issued on his Facebook page, he said, we invited, or the police invited Haka Inde Ichilima on his in, in his individual capacity, mm. and he didn't invite Haka Inde Ichilima together with his cadres. What would you make of uh, such sentiments? From the president, he said, look, we invited a Honorable Jamba as an individual to come answer the questions that we, the police had for him, but Honorable Jamba came with, Honorable Jamba came with, with his, with his cadres, and people were shot during the same fracas. Who is to blame in that instance? My friend, we cannot put blame, play the blame game here. First of all, did Hagainde carry those people in his shoulders or he was putting them in his pocket? Did he, was he sleeping with those people in his home? When he was coming out of his home, he was carrying them on his shoulders. Oh, you come with it. No, you come only with something which you can carry, like this phone. I carried it in my pocket here. I come with it. That's what it means coming with. So when you say coming with, he came with them carrying them. What type of analogy is that? That is mediocrity and people sometimes have got low thinking caliber. You can tell them that no, Hagainde came with Zkadazi, he was told to not to. <laughs> tell me, was he supposed to go on the road? Please go away, go away. Is that what you are going to do? What do you do? make of the, what the president responded? No, I don't want to go to, to respond to what he said. He said uh, Hagainde was invited <laughs> in his individual capacity. Can I answer? Yes, Honorable. Please, don't, don't, bring, don't drag me to what he said. That he has, he has got his own opinion. He's a president. Let me tell you what, he have, what I see in there. Me, as Jamba, the way you see me here, if the police today are going to summon me, even in Mwembeshi, do you think my brothers won't come? Do you think my brothers won't come? I'm a village headman. Do you think the villagers, those whom I, I stay with, they want to come to witness what, I, what I'm going through there? What is wrong to stand there on the road? Okay, tell me. So Nsama also came from HH. Nsama came from HH's house. He was carried by HH and brought there so that you could shoot him. Let's be more, let's be more organized and tell things which are correct. When things are wrong, we say this is wrong. Whoever shot that person, whoever shot that person, did, that is murder. What are your expectations, Honorable, from, from this particular, because the investigations are still going on. What are your expectations, uh, Member of Parliament, or Invest what actions? Me, you my, my own analysis was that the president, could have, would have hired another investigative wing to investigate the police. How can I investigate myself? Who is supposed to offer protection of life? Isn't it the police? If that person who shot is not police or whoever, whether it's a sniper or whoever it is, isn't it that it is the duty of the police to, to protect the, the, the lives of the people? It is their duty. At that time, those people were not armed. Did you see any guns there? They are not armed. They are not armed, and I've seen it many times. Sometimes, when he, when he, my colleague, my fellow judgment, Totela went to 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 ACCA, he went with people. People went there. They followed him. They didn't go with them. They followed him there because they love him. When he went to ACC for questioning, they followed him there. When there was a case at the High Court between Mutati and and Never Simumba, how many people were there? Was there any shooting there? Let's not justify the death of others. Me, I'm a parent. I've got children which I've left at home. Can you imagine I die of a bullet? Who's going to look after my children with this hard economy which the PF itself has achieved to raise to higher poverty? Where? Let's talk things straight. Let's not be beating about the bush. That which happened, we cannot say no because of HH or because of whatever. When you are given the instruments of power, when you have been sworn in as a police, you are going to protect the lives of people. You are going to protect a criminal. Do you know those people who are taken to Mukobeko, those who are taken to Mukobeko, that they have murdered somebody? You cannot murder that person yourself. Why? Life is sacred. You are supposed to protect their lives. Even, you know what those people do? Those who are going like to Mukobeko, they carry them in the vehicles. They will jump maybe from a vehicle to, to try to run away so that they are shot dead so they can die quickly. The, those people, they are trained. They don't kill them. Just bring, catch them and bring them back. But why shoot someone? 
So you tell me, that boy who, who was shot there kuchani kuja kuwacha zanga, Mugara, was brought by HH from his house. Vespas was brought by, by HH. Let's not bring this HH thing, talk about HH or pro, talk about Varungo or whatever. There are things which are supposed to say, this is wrong. Let us agree as Zambians, this is wrong. There is no need to lose, not even one life. Every life matters, and we should not allow anyone to die in our land, because life is sacred. Moving forward, what are your expectations really in how the police should be handling such, you know, such issues honorable? They know, these people, they know what they're supposed to do. That's why, they, you know, they bought those machines where they can even have water, canisters, eh? the water. That's the way it's supposed to do. If people, they become unruly. But that time, they were not even unruly. The police is just to make sure that there is what? There is peace everywhere. If people are coming marching, you know that marching is also allowed in our constitution. Even you, you can march to state house to show your displeasure. You shouldn't be beaten. You shouldn't be shot at. If President Lungu today was going to be taken for, for questioning elsewhere, me, I love him, I would go to see what they are questioning my president. Do you want to shoot me for that? As you give your concluding remarks, I want you to address the people of Zambia. What should be the way forward from you as a lawmaker, but also I want you to address, you know, the people of Mumbeshi on, 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 on going forward. We're, we're getting into an election year on the 12th of August, you know, this particular year. I want you to, to address, number one, the people of Zambia, and number two, the people of, okay. of Mumbeshi. For the people of Zambia, countries must be managed properly. Therefore, if you don't take an interest in who you are putting to manage your, your economies, you will be crying all along, especially those who are educated. You are the biggest problem. You are busy on Facebook, busy on whatever. You are not even voting. You are the people who are bringing this country. You allow other people to vote and run the course of the country because... You would not take, ah, me, I'm a bank manager, or I'm whatever, I don't care what happens. See now what is happening. So we must take keen interest in how we vote for another government, or which government is going to come in 2021, August. Let's see what we are going to do. For the people of Mwembeshi, let me tell you one thing. Help me put a better government in government, and we shall do the development in Mwembeshi. As long as we don't vote properly, we shall continue wallowing in poverty. And you'll be saying, you know, let's move Jamba. Yes, you remove me, but you, there's no money to develop. So what are we going to do? The question here is that let us work together to put a good government and put good people who know what they're doing and putting good priorities, not putting money into things which cannot even produce any kwacha. How many people are driving in this country? How many people are driving in this country? Do you see early in the morning if you want to see that these, even these bridges which you're built in Lusaka, they're just for a few people. Go, Murero Raini, which comes from Chazanga, go up to Chawama. You will see people walking on the floors, walking Kwebera Mutawuni, Mwakanyamamuja. What is that flyover bridge for? For the few elite who drive Mavieg, big engines, so that you can be moving from one another to go and steal money from one place to another. That is what you are doing. And then you are praising infrastructure for what? Whose benefit is it? Whose benefit is it? Do you think as a person in Nichaisa will, will tell you he's benefited from, that, from this flyover bridge? Is that what you're telling me? Yes, talk about electricity in lower, lower kafue. Yes, that one we're saying is a good idea. Let us bring electricity. Honorable Majila Jamba, I wish we could go on and on, but time tonight is not our best ally. Thank you so much for having me. Give me time. three hours, my friend, one next time. I can expound these things so that we know. We, we walk the talk. This is not idea of borrowing money anyhow. You don't even know where you're going. I'd like to thank you so much, Honorable, for having made it for tonight's edition of the assignment. Thank you very much. Thank you, viewers. I'm humbled. I've been speaking to independent member of parliament for Mwembeshi constituency, Honorable Majila Jamba. We've been discussing the state of governance in our country, Zambia. Thank you so much, my producer and director, Mavuto Piri. For now, good night and God bless Zambia.